So there's a guy sitting in a movie theater, and he looks next to him, and he sees a chicken. And he looks at the chicken, and he says, are you a chicken? And the chicken said, well, yes, yes, I am. And he said, well, what are you doing here? And the chicken said, well, I like the book. <laughs> okay, that is one of the worst chicken Aww. jokes I've ever heard. Nice try, though. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of bad chicken jokes out here, but the worst one is called boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Yeah, they cost more money than bone-in chicken, and they have a lot less flavor. So today, we're going to roast bone-in skin on chicken breasts, and the chicken, here's the good news, is going to do most, but not all of the work for us. About time. We're mm. using four 10 to 12 ounce breasts, First, I want to trim off any excess fat. Now, you can take a knife and remove it, or you can take a pair of kitchen shears, which is a great way, and just kind of take away a little bit of that fat. You don't want to cut too much away because we want that skin to stay on. Now, this one, he's got some fat to remove right <laughs> there. Join the club, chicken. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're just going to give this guy a little cut here. This one looks good, and that one looks good. So we just take our fingers and gently lift up that skin. Now we want to keep it attached to the two ends and also as much as possible to this rib end, just almost like a pocket. And if you need to, you can always take a pair of scissors, just loosen it a little bit. And I'm going to fold this back. Now this is also a good opportunity if we were to find any large pockets of fat underneath we could just pull them right out. So now we want to sprinkle these with one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, just much more easy to sprinkle evenly than table salt, which would dissolve very quickly. And if you're using table salt, you'd want to reduce that salt amount by about half. And then I'll go ahead and season the other side as well. And now, go ahead and replace that skin. So it's not completely detached. I'm going to give this guy a little trim here. There we go. Cover that right back up. And then a little bit more salt right on top. Because you're not going to want to throw away the skin. It's going to be super <laughs> crispy. So we want it to be nice and seasoned. I have to say the crispy chicken skin is one of my favorite parts of the chicken. There is still a little bit of fat underneath the skin. We want that fat to render. So we're going to give it away to melt away from the chicken. So I'm going to take a skewer. You can also use a paring knife. You want to make five or six, even seven, if you're feeling jaunty, <laughs> little holes right in any pockets of fat. That is all the prep that we have to do. Pretty easy. That was it. Yep, that's it. So I'm going to put these on a foil line tray. These are going to go into a pretty low oven, 325 degrees. This meat is very, very lean. So at 325 degrees, it's not going to squeeze out all the excess juices. Also, it's going to dry the skin just a little bit. Then later on, when we do go to sear it, it's going to get nice and crisp. Mm, best part, these will stay in there for 35, 40 minutes until the internal temp reaches 160 degrees. So while the chicken's in the oven, we have time to make a sauce. And mm. chicken breast is still pretty lean, even with that skin on. So it can take a really rich sauce. We're going to make an easy one, though, with mayonnaise as the base. So I've got fresh cilantro. I need about a cup of the leaves and the stems. Just going to roughly chop this. We're going to let the blender do most of the work. Now, the interesting thing about cilantro is that unlike parsley, the stems of cilantro actually taste sweet, so you can include them, but the stems of parsley taste bitter, so never include parsley stems, but always include cilantro stems. All right, so next up, jalapenos. I've already gone ahead and prepped two of them. This is the third. You're bold. No gloves, huh? No gloves. <laughs> if you want to, especially if you wear contact lenses, I would advise people to wear gloves at home. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I like a little pain. So I'm going to take my knife, go ahead and stem the jalapeno and then slice it lengthwise. Now, most of the heat resides in the ribs and the core. So I'm going to take a little spoon and just scrape that away. So I'm just making matchsticks here. And then I'm just working my knife right across, keeping track of where my little fingers are. And then this goes all into the blender. We have a half cup of regular prepared mayonnaise and tablespoon of lime juice, two minced garlic cloves. That is some serious flavor you're putting in there. I'm not joking. <laughs> this is a serious sauce. <laughs> and a half a teaspoon of salt. We're going to let this go for about a minute until it's pretty darn smooth. 
So now this is a pretty good sauce, but we want to add a lot more richness. So I'm going to drizzle in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil as this is running. And the reason you didn't put the olive oil in at the beginning is because when you blend olive oil for far too long, it begins to turn quite bitter. So whenever you're blending something and adding olive oil, always add it at the end. Look how gorgeous this is. That is really pretty. Mm -hmm. Took seconds to make. Now all we have to do is wait on the chicken. Wow, Bridget, you really have done yourself. <laughs> wow, aren't they gorgeous? Not. I guarantee you they're going to look a lot better and quickly. You've commented on how blonde these are. There's no color on there, but I do need to make sure that they've cooked enough. So I'm looking for about 160 degrees. So these are 160, perfect. So we're ready to cook. Traditionally, we would go ahead and heat up a big skillet, a mm -hmm. little bit of oil in there, over high heat, medium high heat. The problem is chicken, especially with skin on chicken, has a little bit of moisture right under that skin. Yeah, you can see it almost glistening there. If that moisture hit that hot oil and that Stand hot pan. Stand back. Exactly, it's splatter city. Mm -hmm. So what I've done here is I've heated our 12 inch skillet over low heat for five minutes. It's a much milder temperature in this pan. I'm gonna go ahead and add one tablespoon of vegetable oil. We'll go swirl this around. It takes a little bit longer when the pan's not quite as hot. There we go. And now I'll add the chicken skin side down right into that pan. Now we shouldn't really hear anything. So that's pretty remarkable. We're browning chicken in a cold pan. Yeah, who'd have thunk it? We're going to crank up the heat to medium high. And now we'll cook these skin side down until that skin gets really nice and crisp. That's gonna take about three to five minutes. All right, let's check out that color. Ooh, now that is some good looking chicken. It's about as sexy as chicken can get, right? <laughs> it is. We do need to cook this a little bit longer. We don't want the skin to get too much more color. So I'm gonna prop them up on the side with the fat end of the meat facing down in the pan, just to give it a little bit more time there. All right, so we're gonna give this another one to two minutes, and then we're gonna put them on the platter. All right, that is it. Let's turn off the heat. Those are some of the most gorgeous pieces of chicken I've ever seen. Who would have thought, right? You know, if you tell somebody you're making chicken breasts for dinner, mm -hmm. they don't expect that. No. These need to sit for about five minutes, and then we're good to eat. Five minutes is finally up. Nice. All right, so it's time. Eating time. That's right. For sauce, I always like to spoon it on the side because that skin is so nice and crispy. Yeah. You don't want to mar it with sauce. It's almost so pretty, I don't want to eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what's really surprising is how well seasoned the chicken is because you didn't have to let that salt sit on the chicken for very long. Exactly, just salt it and then right into the oven. But the sauce is really nice. It adds that rich component oh. as well. I'm just gonna have one bite of nothing but chicken skin. So decadent. <laughs> so for the best tasting chicken, let the bones and skin do most of the work for you. Sprinkle a little salt underneath the skin for flavor, then use a two-step cooking method that starts in the oven and finishes on the stovetop. From the test kitchen to your kitchen, the best recipe for roasted bone-in chicken breasts. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.